Some of you may be aware of the psychic performer, James Hadrick. He was born in 1959, but came to public knowledge as a young man when he was debunked by James Randi. He appeared on TV, seemingly doing remarkable things. Some sceptics, including Randi, basically showed that it was common tricks. His ability to move a pencil on the edge of a table. His ability to roll over the pages of a book without using his hands, but instead simply using air from his nostril and directing it in such a way as to move the object, whether a pencil balanced on an edge of a table, a piece of paper um, in a small glass enclosure on a table with enough room underneath as to allow the air to go underneath the gap and thus move the piece of paper. And of course, to roll over pages on a book with enough directed force. After being exposed, he actually confessed to being a fraud, to being a fake, to not being psychic. There was even a documentary out there about the topic, interviewing James Hadrick. And he talks about how he learnt certain trades, certain tricks, when he was fooling people as a young man, as a boy. Raised in an abusive home, he desired to defend himself. And after seeing the death of one of his brothers at the hand of his father, he decided to learn karate as a way of defending himself. As a child, he went from foster home to foster home. As an adult, from prison cell to prison cell. Throughout the 1980s, he was repeatedly arrested for crimes ranging from assault to burglary. Despite this, he was able to use his skills in karate and sleight of hand to gain some notoriety, eventually becoming quite well known for supposed psychokinesis, that is to say, moving objects with the power of the mind. Declaring himself a master in this art form, he set up martial arts classes and claimed he could pass on the psychokinetic gift to children through special techniques. After gaining notoriety and appearing on television, he gained a cult following, people who genuinely believed that he had those powers. Indeed, some sceptics who put him to the test were convinced that he must be doing some kind of genuine magic. His exposure as a fraud was down to the magician James Randi, who showed that the pencil trick could be done without any psychic powers, and used a series of polystyrene pieces around a book to show if it was, or if it was not, a question of blowing upon the pages. Hadrick claimed that he could not do it under these conditions because of static from the polystyrene. On the very same television program he had moved the pencil and he had also moved the pages of the book. But once James Randi came in, dismissed the pencil by replicating the effect and put polystyrene around the book so any gust of air would basically be noticeable, James Hadrick for some reason could not do the trick. In actual fact, he spent an hour and a half staring at the pages. Uh, much of this was edited out of the full airing of the show for obvious reasons. At the end, he said he could not do it, and the panel of judges, uh, sceptic judges, they said that there was no evidence of anything paranormal actually taking place. This demonstration showed that there was very little to it, that he could not do things in the most simple of test conditions, that his tricks could be replicated and there seemed to be no real reason to assume it was indeed mind power moving objects. Hadrick made a number of assertions why he couldn't do it. 
claiming static charge from the stage lights and the effect of the polystyrene was causing a static electrical field which was preventing him from being able to use his psychokinetic abilities. Later on, some of his supporters made similar statements backing up his point that he could not do it because of certain factors. The failure of James Hadrick, essentially speaking, ended his claim to fame. The final nail in his career's coffin was from Dan Karem, who exposed Hadrick by showing how his other tricks worked too. With the full picture between Randy and Korem, they basically showed how Hadrick simply had no real powers at all. Hadrick confessed that he was indeed a trickster who developed his tricks in prison, and that he had not learnt it from a Chinese master, as he originally claimed. After the forced confession of Hadrick, after being fully exposed, he said this, My whole idea behind this, in the first place, was to see how dumb America was, how dumb the world is. That quote was simply a knee-jerk reaction. He had lost his career and perhaps wanted to put a, well, a silver lining on this black cloud. But to be entirely fair, there was no way that James Hadrick could put a positive spin on his part in history. In 1989, the picture became clear. He was sentenced to 17 years in prison for the crime of molesting young boys. So it turned out in the end that far from being a guru in the martial arts and the idea of psychic powers, he was in fact a person suffering from antisocial personality disorder as well as a series of sexual disorders which he did not wish to treat. A person who had actually abused young males for his own sexual gratification. Due to his crimes, as well as his state of mind, he has been kept in prison for the last 25 years in special mental health facilities. More recently, in 2013, Hadrick petitioned for his release. The trial went ahead, but resulted in a hung jury, an absolute deadlock which could not be broken. He remains in prison now, and in some ways I almost hope they'll throw away the key.